who made the God of the entire universe, and how do we know this? Find out in today's video. We're going to start off this whole question with an assumption. We're going to assume that we all agree that the universe had a beginning. And we'll probably touch base on this in a different video, but there's a lot of evidence to that, that the universe had a beginning. So with that assumption in mind, there are two main directions that people go with this. People usually either go, God stepped in and created everything, or the universe made itself. Something of those natures are the two main categories that we go off of. Personally, I believe that God created everything. Now, this brings up a question. Most people would ask the question, well, who made God then? And that's a legitimate question. Now, to understand this, to, to really realize, is this a good question? We have to put it in reverse and see if it logically still makes sense. So my question is, if you believe that the universe made itself, the universe made you, then who made your maker? Things start to break down. But another thought, if we are talking about a God that someone stepped in and made, we actually have a name for that. It's called an idol. A God that is made is an idol. But the God that I worship is actually eternal. And actually the Bible tackles this head on because they expected the Bible, God himself, who authored the Bible, knew that we would have this question. And so in the Gospel of John, he's actually writing to a culture 2,000 years ago that was asking this same question. And so in John 1.1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, this word beginning, in the beginning, it's speaking to this culture that's asking, well, who made you God? It's saying before anything else, he is eternal. He did not have a beginning. He did not have an end. Now, scientifically, how can we understand this? Now, we need to look at someone else who I think is smarter than most of us named Einstein and a lot of his cohorts. They came up with a lot of theories and they actually did some mathematical proof and they said that yes the universe had a beginning and at that point space that means outer space the great big expanse time the whole concept of time and matter all came into being at the same point and this point is called the point of singularity and this is the point when space time and matter all came into existence. So think with me for a second. When was the last time you found anything that showed any kind of design, any kind of um, complexity to it that just made itself? From cars to chairs to bridges, everything we find that shows design has a designer, a creator. It never just creates itself. A painting is a perfect example because in a painting, we see design, we see uh, complexity, we see beauty. We see all these things coming together in this one painting. And we never think, oh, the paints just squiggled around and made this thing. No, we always think there was a designer, a creator, someone who stepped in and made it, painted it. It's obvious this is what happened. So when we're looking at space, time, and matter, it's the same concept. If the painting had to have someone from outside the paint step in to make it, well, space, time, and matter had to have someone from outside of them to step in to make them. In other words, the universe could not have made itself. That would be like a self-making computer that just came out of nowhere. That's impossible. But the human mind, and we'll go into another video how complex we are, but everything about us is incredibly complex. Someone stepped in from outside of this and made it. 
Now here's the key when you ask the question, well, who made God? If God created time, the whole concept of time, that means he is outside of time and he stepped in and made it. That means he's not under the same law and the same control of time. Every one of us needs time or because we're held by time, we need a beginning, a middle and an end all because we're bound by time. And so God is not bound by time. He has no need for a beginning. He is truly eternal, no beginning and no end. I know it's hard for us to wrap our minds around this because we're stuck in time, but this is why the creator to the entire universe, the God of the Bible does not need a creator. So if you want to keep on following us, if you want to find out more, we are going to prove who that God's name is in one of our upcoming videos. Be sure and subscribe and ring the bell so that you will not miss any of the upcoming videos. I sure love you guys.